Welcome back, lovely friends. This is part two of Mornings with Nana, making your own homemade uh, sauerkraut. So if you followed with the first part, you're already with me on the second. And this is really simple. It's not any more difficult than the first part, so don't worry. Um, what you need here for this part is a couple of jars. And like I said, they can be mason jars or any glass uh, jar that you had spaghetti sauce in or any other big clean jar. Now, I've already gone ahead and chopped up my sauerkraut. This part is where you need to have really clean hands. It's your kitchen, so you know how you are. Um, stir this around. I'm gonna tip this bowl here just a bit. This is my, my cabbage that's been sitting for about, oh, maybe an hour, hour and a half. You can see how damp it is, how it's kind of clumping together. Get in there with your wet hands and uh, give it a good stir. Now, at the bottom of this, I don't know if you can see this, and it's okay if you can't, you'll notice that there's a bunch of juice. This is from the cabbage. This has been drawn out from the cabbage because of all the brine that we used on this. So we want that to continue in the fermenting process. Now, at this point, um, if you like caraway or onions in your sauerkraut, this is when you would add that into this mix. I don't really care for caraway, so I'm not going to put it in. Now, you can put this directly into your, your uh, mason jar. You can stuff it in like this. Some of you might have one of these. This is a wide mouth canner uh, funnel. If you want, you can stuff it in like that, whatever way you like, because it's your kitchen. Anyway, I, I kind of like to get my hands in here and pack this down. So use any long spoon you got and pack that in tight. Now you want to make sure you pack these really full. Make use of your space here in this jar. It's not going to uh, uh, get any larger like some things do, but it will actually compress a little bit. So give it a good shake, put it in again, and keep on going. I wanna say a nice thank you all to so many of my friends here that have gone ahead and supported our page and our uh, videos. Went ahead and subscribed to us. Thank you so very much for your kindness and your support. Thanks for sharing this everywhere. If you haven't subscribed yet, today's a really good day to do so. All right, I've got this packed down in here. And like I said, you never really quite know how much uh, cabbage you're gonna get so just chop up what you got and just see how see how much I'm pushing on here just go ahead and do it and this will start releasing even more of its natural juice now at this point I'm gonna stop filling this see this edge here I'm down below it, probably, mm, maybe I could cram more in there, I don't know. Let's try one more cram. Let's just stick it in there. Now, we're still from the top of the jar. As this continues, releasing some of the cabbage juice, it's going to fill this jar up with uh, that juice. So you have to have this extra space at the top for uh, allowance for that juice. That's all there is to this. That's it, there is no more magic. It will do its own work in um, getting fermented into sauerkraut. Now, what you can do is a couple of things. I like to take these things and stick them on top because it's cute. It keeps this kind of sealed, and then every once in a while you take it off and let that air get into there um, and release some of that gas. But 
you want to, the main point is to keep this nice and clean so that uh, nothing else gets into it. Now, what I have here is two cups of water. So, what I'm going to do, where's my magic? Yeah, here we go. Is make a little bit of extra brine. And to do this, I kind of like my sour a little salty. Here, I'm get this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I like it a little bit more salty. So I'm going to put about two tablespoons of brine in there, of salt, and stir it around and dissolve it. Now remember, never use salt that has iodine in it. Cannot be iodized salt. You either use a nice pickling salt or just get a nice quality non-iodized salt for, for this purpose. Right now, what we want to do, if you can look in here, there's no juice on top of the upper layer of that cabbage. We've got to put a little bit of specials in there. This is our little secret sauce. There you go. That's all it is, and you're done. Now, I want to keep it nice and clean. So if you say, well, Nana, I don't have one of those fancy glass tops. That's okay. I never did either until recently, so don't worry about that. There's a couple of things you can do. You can take a little sandwich bag and fill it partially full of water and stick it inside the rim of this because your goal is to keep all of this nice cabbage underneath that water. If you don't, the top of the cabbage that pokes out and is exposed to air will actually get moldy, and that's not what we're after. So keep that under, under that brine. So you fill that up. If you don't let that get dry, what you can do is take a nice coffee filter. Like I said, I work on the cheap. We're well, not gonna go buy anything special for these projects. Put that over the top. That lets some of the air out, keeps it nice and clean, and put it on with one of your canning rings, and that's it. So what you can do now is just set it aside and let it sit in a cool, dark spot. You could put a little cookie sheet underneath it or a bowl, so if the juices in here exceed the level and they come out the top, which sometimes happens, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly good to eat. Um, it will catch that extra fluid. But you do want to check on it periodically and make sure that all of that cabbage is underneath that level of that brine. If it dries out, no problem. How hard was it to make a little brine? We took a little cup of water and put a tablespoon of salt in it, stirred it around, poured it in. That's it. That's your entire ingredients. Now, if you go to the store, look to pay, oh, I would say uh, in our area, probably a good $10, $12 for a, um, a big jar of homemade sauerkraut. So this costs me nothing. It, it, it's just absolutely nothing. And it's just a little bit of your time and you've got something wholesome and delicious without any chemicals or preservatives in it. This will be shelf stable. Um, if you put it in a water bath canner for 10 minutes, or you can just keep it in your fridge and have it handy for any time you want to eat it. And that's about it for that. Once again, thanks so much for subscribing and push that little uh, subscribe button for me if you don't mind, if you haven't already done so. I'll talk to you again soon, lovely friends. Remember, Nana loves you. Bye.